We are talking about operations on radicals, lesson number two, adding and subtracting radicals. Now, in the last lesson, we verified that the addition of radicals cannot be done by adding the radicands. You can't just add the radicands and get the, the answer. So we need to develop a rule for adding and subtracting radicals. So let's take a look at some of these examples and take a look. And here we'll circle the statements which are true and then place a single line through the expressions which are false. So taking a look at number one here, we, we have root two plus five root two, and it says that it equals six root two, but we need to verify that. So if we plug this into our calculator, root two, and got that answer, um, and then we add it to plus five, uh, five root two, we actually get, well, see, see, we can think of these root twos as like an X. So we can think of this as 5x plus one other x. So this is actually true. So we can circle that. That actually is, is a true statement, that 5 root 2 plus 1 root 2 is 6 root 2. Let's take a look at number 2. So here we have 4 cube root of 5 minus 7 cube root of 5. And here we can take a look. And in fact, this is also true. Um, 4 take away 7, that's negative 3 cube root of 5. So that's also true. We'll, we'll circle that as well. Then if we take a look at this one, we'll, let's take a look. If we think of this, we have a 5 square root 8 minus 2 square root 8 plus 7 square root 8. And actually, that does actually equal 10 root 8. We would check this on a calculator and see that all the the, the decimals are the same, and we would assume that it would, uh, even though we can't see the rest of the decimals, that it would be equal. So this is also true. Now what are we noticing here? Well, we're noticing that, uh, you know, in the first case we had five of something plus one of that exact same thing. Here we have four of something, the cube root of five, minus seven of that same quantity of the cube root of five and we found that four minus seven is, is negative three. And here we have five of something, that root eight minus two root eight plus seven root eight. We think five minus two is, is three plus seven is 10. We have 10 of these quantities of root eight. Well, then let's take a look at uh, part four here, seven root five plus seven cube root of five and we're testing, we're trying to see, you know, is this 14 um, to the fifth root of 5? Well, we can think, let's see, we could have uh, 7 times, you know, the, the square root of 5 is the number that when you square it, you get 5. So this is actually 2 um, something, 2 point. Anyways, this in fact uh, doesn't, is, not, is not true. Um, you can't get this value. So we're going to cross that one out. So that one's not true. And you could verify that with your calculator. You take the left side, put it in your calculator and see what you get. And then the right side and use a calculator. You can find out that those two sides are not equal. Let's test this equation. Let's see if that actually is true. It says that the cube root of three plus the cube root of two is equal to the cube root of five. And that also is not true. Um, even though the index here is the same, you can't just add the radicands and, and, and make it equal in a radical. So if we use these results, can we suggest a rule for adding and subtracting radicals? Well, we can see then if the index is the same and the radicand is the same, we can treat it almost like a variable of the same quantity and then we can use the coefficients to add. So we can write that. So we can use the coefficients to simplify. Use the coefficients to simplify. If the index and radicand are the same. Let me just push that up so that you can see that. So we're using the results here to suggest this rule and we're using, you can use the coefficients to simplify as an addition and subtraction. 
if the index and radical radicand are the same. And you would keep the coefficient and also keep the radical quantity. So let's take a look at this this example here. We're going to simplify the following. Express this answer as a mixed radical. So let's take a look here. We have 8 root 7 minus 3 root 7 plus 15 root 7. Now noticing here, even though the, it's, the, you know, the index is blank, we can treat that as a 2, so it's a square root. And we also notice the radicand is also the same. So we can simplify this by keeping the same uh, radical and noticing that we have 8 of, of one quantity minus 3 of that same quantity, which makes 5 of that quantity, and then adding 15 more of that same quantity. So 8 minus 3 is 5 plus another 15, that is 20 root 7. So that equals 20 root 7. Now let's take a look at this, uh, this part 2. 18, the fifth root of 10, plus 12, with the fifth root of 10 minus 7 of the fifth root of 10. Let's notice that the indexes of these radicals are the same and also the radicands are the same. So we can simplify this quantity. We will have a quantity that is the same, the, the fifth root of 10 and 18 using the coefficients 18 plus 12 is 30. Uh, 18 plus 10 is 28 plus 2 more is 30 minus 7 is 23. So there's 23 of that quantity, the, the fifth root of 10. Now in part 3, the same thing is, even though we don't know what this numerical value here of, of x is, we can see the index is the same, it's both blank, so it's a square root, and the radicand is also the same, and that is an x. So we can see that we have uh, a root x here, and using the coefficients, we can simplify. We have 5 of that quantity minus 4 of that quantity. That leaves us with 1 of that quantity. But when we have 1 of a quantity, it's not necessary to write that 1. So that is equal to the square root of x. Well, taking a look at this investigation too, then we can then use our calculator to verify that these following statements are true. So take a look. If we take the square root of 2 and plug that into our calculator, and then add the square root of 8, and we get a, val a value. Then we test it with the right-hand side of this and say 3 root 2. Then we'll actually notice that these are true. Check. That, that actually is, is right. And again here for this one, we can say, we can plug into our calculator this whole left side, 5 root 12 plus 6 root 48. And then test it against the right side, uh, 34 root 3. And we also actually find out when we plug this into our calculator that when we plug in this left side and get an answer, it's exactly equal, or at least we can see the decimals are the same, um, that equal to this amount of 34 root 3. Well, why does this, um, why does this happen? See, in our previous example that I ruled out here, we said that we can only, the rule for adding and subtracting radicals is we can only simplify using the coefficients uh, and simplify adding and subtracting if the index and the radicand are the same. So in this case, we take a look and we see, hey, yeah, the index might be the same, but the radicands are different. So how can we put those together? This radicand is different than that radicand. How can we put this together? Yes, it does appear. So yes, it does appear to contradict the rule that we wrote in, in the investigation above. But let's take a look and, and see if we can investigate a little further because if we can maybe change the look of the square root of 8 to um, a different form, we might be able to see how it square root of 2 plus square root of 8 becomes 3 root 2. So let's take a look. Here we have square root 2, so that's the same thing there. That There's nothing to change, and we have the plus sign. Now, the square root of 8, if you remember from the last lesson, uh, we changed this entire radical to a mixed radical. And so what we did was we, we took the factors of 8 and we tried to find a perfect square factor, and that's 4. And we have 4 times 2 here underneath the 
the radical sign. And of course, that's that still remains root 2. But this here can be split up into root 4 times root 2. And of course, and that's one of the rules that we established in the last lesson, right? The, the radical of a product is the product of those radical factors. And so here we can think, well, we can take a look at this with the square root of 4. We know what the square root of 4 is. The square root of 4 is 2. So in fact, here we have the square root of 2 plus 2 of the square root of 2. Well, when we take a look at this, we can see that then we have the same index and the same radicand. So here, we can actually add, add them together. So we have a square root of 2 plus 2 more of a square root of 2. That's equal to 3 square root of 2. Well, that's, that's amazing. Look, it does actually equal what the right side is. So we verified that with a calculator, but now we can start to see how we can see numbers in a different form so that we can actually t uh, take advantage of that rule. Well, let's try it with this one. We have 5 root 12 plus 6 root 48. And at first glance, we see, well, yes, the index is the same, but the radicands are different. So how can we simplify these? Well, it might be possible if we can simplify these into a different form of a mixed radical, a different form of the mixed radical where the radicals end up being the same index and the same radicand, then we might be able to use coefficients to simplify. So let's take a look. Here 5 root 12, let's separate the number 12 into um, its factors. And I'm going to um, cleverly choose perhaps that I'm going to use a perfect square factor like the number 4. Now we could have used 2 and 6, um, but if we can find perfect square factors, it makes our life a little bit easier. So that is 5, and this part here can be split up, of course, into root 4 times root 3. And furthermore, this root 4 becomes a 2, and this is times root 3. So even in this, I'll just move this up a little bit, this 5 times 2 becomes 10. So this actually, this whole part becomes 10 root 3. Now, of course, here we'll follow the plus sign. We'll make it um, look like it's on its own. You can see that it's in a column here. And 6 root 48. Well, let's see if we can find a perfect square factor of 48. Um, let's see. Well, we could use 4. That's a perfect square factor. But actually, a, a higher one is is the square root, or sorry, uh, 16. 16 is a perfect square factor of 48 because 16 times 3 equals 48. And again, this is clever by us because we can separate this into root 16 times root 3. And this root 16 in the middle, I'll just keep the 6 here, the root 16 in the middle actually can be translated to the number 4. So we have 6 times 4 root 3. So we have 6 times 4, which is 24 root 3. And now, since we're adding, we can notice the index is the same and the radicands are the same. And so we can say we have 24 of a quantity plus 10 more of a quantity. That is 34 of that same quantity. I can put the box around that. Looking at the next example, we're going to take a look at adding and subtracting radicals. Um, and express them, oops, we're going to express radicals as like radicals. And if we can consider what a like radical is, it's the radicals with the same radicand and the same index. And if they have the same index and the same radicand, then we can think of them as like radicals, just like like terms, you know, if you remember from uh, previous courses. So here, let's take a look at this example. Uh, write each expression in terms of a single radical. So let's take a look, square root of 80 minus square root of 20. Now at first glance, you think, oh, the radicands are not the same. We might not be able to simplify. But we might be able to change this into a mixed radical that might have a like radical with this one. So let's Take a look, perfect square factors of this number 80. 
let's try well 16 actually is a nice one because we can do 16 times 5 is the number 80 and for the number 20 we can we can take a look and say well the factors of 20 is there a perfect square factor of 20 yes the the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 you might be able to see oops I, I did an, an extra step there but hopefully you can see it I made that the number 20 is split into its two factors but because it's a radical of that product we can also separate it into individual radicals multiplied by each other. So here we can continue on. This is root 16 times root 5. I already did that step here, root 4 times root 5. And now at this step we can think, well, if we can recognize how to translate this square root 16 to another number, so that's the number 4, root 5 minus the square root of 4 is 2, 2 root 5. And then we can see that the 4 root 5 minus 2 root 5, because we have the same index and the same radicand, 4 minus 2 is 2 root 5, and there is our answer. Taking a look at B, the cube root of 80 plus the cube root of 270. Again, in first glance, we, we might not be able to tell that we can, can simplify this, but let's take a, take a look. So, splitting this up, remember that we have to recognize the index. So that is going to change our, our procedure just slightly. Um, you know, in this case, we were looking at square roots. In this case, we're going to be looking at perfect cube factors so that we can simplify. So perfect cube factors, we can say, is the cube root of 8 cube root of 10. We have 8 times 10 made 80, so we have the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 10. Now the cube root of 8 is something that we do know. The cube root of 8 is 2, and we'll leave the cube root of 10 alone. The plus side, of course, will stay the same. Can we think of a perfect cube factor of the number 270? Well, we can split that up actually into 27 times 10. Now why did I choose 27? Because 27 is a familiar number in which 3 cubed is the number 27. So I can split that up into the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 10. And here we can have the 2, the cube root of 10 plus, and this cube root of 27 can be translated to the number 3. We have the cube root of 10 and therefore that together 2 of one quantity plus 3 of one quantity is going to be 5 of that same quantity. So we have 5 cube root of 10. So taking a look here at, at part C we can see that 7 root 27 minus 3 root 75 plus 2 root 147. We're, again, we, we notice that the radicands aren't the same. So we can't just go right to simplifying um, them like radicals. Uh, but we can change these into a different form of mixed radical in which we might be able to find like radicals to get. So here we take, let's see. The, uh, what is a perfect square factor of the number 27? Well, we can think of this as root 9 times root 3. And then if we simplify that, again, this root 9 becomes 7. Oh, the, sorry, the root 9 becomes 3. The square root of 9 is 3. And I just put that 7 down because that we, we didn't touch that yet. So 7 times 3 times root 3 we can see that this 7 times 3 is 21 root 3. Then we have the minus signs that are all the same there. So 3 square root 75. How can we take a look at this 75 and find a perfect square factor of this 75? Well, we can think of the square root of 25. You know, the number 75 is actually 25 times 3. So we could actually now split this using our rule of radicals is the square root of 25 times the square root of 3 
and this is going to be 3 times 5 times the square root of 3. And we also have to simplify the other one too. We're going to be adding a plus 2. So I'm going to put all the pluses down here. We have a 2. Uh, that's not going to change. But the square root of 147, we need to find a nice uh, perfect square factor of it. Now, um, I'm going to just pretend to be lucky here and say, well, the number 147 is actually 49 times 3. And that um, 49 is a perfect square. This is nice because we can actually separate that 49, uh, 147 into 49 times 3, which means that I can split the radical of this product into a product of radicals. So uh, this square root of 49 times 3 all inside, I'll just move this over so you can see it, um, the square root of, becomes the square root of 49 times the square root of 3. This simplifies, of course, to 2 times 7 times root 3. And we can see that this is 21 root 3 plus, well, 3 times 5 is 15 root 3. 15 root 3. And 2 times 7 is 14 root 3. And this is 21 root 3. So if we continue on, we can say 21 minus 15 plus 14 is, well, let's see, 21 minus 15 is 6, and then plus 14 is 20. So this actually becomes 20 root 3, and that is our answer. Now you might say, okay, well, what if I didn't think of this 49? What if I couldn't find what that perfect square factor was? Now this one, of course, is easy, but if we take a prime factorization of the number 147, we could take a look and we can say, all right, with this 147, we can say this, even its prime factorization, dividing by 3 or dividing by 2, well, 2 doesn't go into that, but what about dividing by 7? Well, you get 7, 7 times 21. And you think, well, what can I do with that? Well, if you break that 21 down into 7 times 3, you'll notice that you would have the, that if you talked about the square root of 147, then this would be the square root of 7 times 7 times 3. Now, you might need to put this together to make a 49 first, but you can also notice that this is a pair. Once you have a pair of factors underneath a radical sign, this is the same thing as saying the square root of 7 squared. Well, the square root of 7 squared is that number 7, right? And I'm just going to make this equal, so I'm going to just put the 3 there. And this is times the square root of 3. So, of course, if you have any questions, you can certainly ask me in, in class. Well, let's take a look at some um, slightly more difficult problems in... Um, in simplifying and so where we have you know some fractions that we might need to work with so here in class example 2 and a we'll need to to work with this square root of 108 um, this square root of 8 and square root of 48 and of course you can notice that the, the, the radicands are not the same but let's simplify these into um, a different form of mixed radical where we might be able to find like radicals. So we have a negative 5 in front as a coefficient. This root 108, if we think of perfect square factors of that number, uh, we can think, hmm, uh, well, I'm not so sure. Let's take the number 108 and uh, split it into 2. So we would say, okay, well, this is 2 times 54. And um, maybe I'll do some side work here. So if we went over to the side, I'm just going to move this to the side. Um, if we continue on here, we have 108, which splits into 2 times 54. And then if we split that into, we have a 9 and we have a 6. Um, well, 9 is nice. We can have uh, 9 as a perfect square factor. But in fact... If we continue on with the two, 6, we have 
this is 2 times 3. So in fact, we also have another pair of numbers here. So in fact, we could say that 2 times um, 6, here if we split up this into another one of 3 and 3, we'll notice that we also have a pair of 3's here. So if we put those together, we have a pair of we have a 9 uh, as a perfect square factor. We also have a pair of 2's as factors. And we have another one. So we could think, well, could this be then 9 times 4? Let's try this. If this was negative 5 and this was 36 times 3, would that work? Does 36 times 3, does that equal 108? And yes, it does. So here we can split that up into the square root of 36 and the square root of 3. And we find out that this is negative 5 times, the square root of 6 is translated to 6, and we have the square root of 3. Then we can also add the rest of these. So let's take a look. We have the cube root of not the cube root, sorry, the square root of, of 8, so 3 quarters. The square root of 8 we can think of as actually root 4 times root 2. Again here, 3 over 4. This can be 2, root 2. And here again we have the 3 quarters um, times 2. Oh, I just wrote that uh, twice. but. Here, this 2 and this 4 can cancel. So this 4 has two 2's on the bottom, this has a 2 on the top. One of those 2's on the top will cancel one of the 2's on the bottom. So this is going to be 3 over 2 root 2. Let's take a look at 48. Do we have a perfect square factor of 48? Well, indeed we do. We have, I'm just going to write the 5 over 4. Then root 48 can be thought of as root 16 times 3. The number 48 is 16 times 3. Now if I write that again, we can think, well, we can split that up into root 16 times root 3. And if I write that again, we have root 16 can be translated into the number 4. Root 3 remains the same. And here we have this 4 and this 4 will cancel and we have 5 root 3. Now we also have here this very last one is 1 half root 50. So let's put all our plus signs so it looks uh, like it's in a column. We have 1 half and can we think of perfect square factor of 50? Yes, I think so. It's 25 times 2. You'll notice here under the radicand that this number uh, is 50 and this is 25 times 2. So we have 1 half, and we can split this up into root 25 times root 2. And again, we have 1 half. This num root tw tw 25 can be thought of as the number 5, root 2. And here it becomes 5 times 1 over 2 times 1, so 5 over 2, root 2. Now this does look complicated, but we can now use our coefficients to simplify this. So this is negative 30 root 3, and then let's put this, this side together with that. So that's going to be a minus 5 root 3, and then we'll collect the root 2's on the other side. So we have a, a plus 3 root 2, sorry, plus 3 over 2 root 2 plus a 5 over 2 root 2. Hopefully you can see that. And now we can simplify. Um, here we have negative 30 and negative 5, so it's negative 35 root 3. And adding these together, we have 3 over 2 plus 5 over 2. You have fractions, but they have a common denominator. So you have 3 plus 5 is 8, but 8 over 2 is 4, so this is 4 root 2. Uh, this is hopefully our answer and uh, we can certainly check in class. For the final, 
uh, example before you get to your assignment. Taking a look at this question here, it looks a little more complicated where you have uh, fractions as well as higher indexes. So here we have this cube root of 64 over 8 plus 2 cube root of 375 minus 2 over 3 uh, times the cube root of 54 minus 5 cube root of 24 over 2. And so what we're going to do uh, at first glance, you can't, you can see that the radicands are not the same, and even the index, oh, the indexes are the same, but the radicands are certainly different. So we're going to have to try and change these to a different mixed uh, radical so that we can simplify a little bit more. So taking a look at the cube root of 64, well, is there a number that when you cube it, it is 64? If we're lucky, it is it's a nice number. Actually, we can simplify that right into 4, because 4 cubed is 64, and that's over top of 8. And we can have a plus sign here. Now, when we have the radicand of 375, we're looking for perfect cube factors of the number 375. And then, if it's a perfect cube, the cube root of that uh, will be a nice number. So here, I'm going to choose, well, I can see that 125, I have to remember to put the index there, 3, um, the cube root of 125 times the cube root of 3 is the same thing as the cube root of 375. And I'm going to have to spread this out a little bit so you'll notice that this goes a little bit further right. But you have 2 uh, and the cube root of 54. Is there a perfect cube that is a factor of 54? And there is actually the cube root 27 times 2 is the number 54. And we can put that over 3. Um, and we continue on here. We have a negative sign or a subtraction. We have minus 5. And we have the cube root of 24. Well, the cube root of 24, can we think of a number uh, that is a perfect cube that is a factor of 24? And I think we found one we can say that the cube root of 8 times 3, 8 times 3 is 24, and uh, so we found a nice perfect um, cube in here as a factor of 24. I'm also going to put this over 2. So when we simplify this, we get 1 half. Uh, 4 over 8 simplifies to 1 half. This here is 2, and I'm going to put a bracket here. The cube root 125 is 5 because the cube of 5, or the 5 cubed is 125. That still remains to have the cube root of 3. This next term uh, can be simplified here. We have 2 times the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2 over 3. And again, we're moving a little bit right here, but 5. And we're going to split this up into the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 3. That's all over 2. But now we can start to simplify a little bit more. Now we have not using the 1 half, so I'm just going to copy that down. This 2 and 5 multiply to get the number 10, so we have 10 root 3. Now this, this cube root of 27 actually uh, becomes the number 3. And then we have a cube root of 2. That's over the number 3. And then we have this subtraction. And 5 here, the cube root of 8 is the number 2. Uh, continue on to the cube root of 3. And that's all over 2. Now we'll notice here in some cases, uh, we can see in the middle term here that this 3 and this 3 can cancel. Or else we can also do 2 times 3, which is 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we can cancel out this 3. Uh, in this term here, we can see that 5 times 2 is 10, divided by 2 is 5, or we can also see that those 2's cancel. So in the end, we have 1 half, and then here I'm just going to underline with a squiggly here that this 10 root 3 is a like radical 
to this negative 5 root 3. So we're going to actually put those two together and make it into 5. Oh, no, I missed the index on this radical here. This should be a, a 3. So 5 cube root of 3. And then here minus, because those threes canceled, it was 2 cube root of 2. And this is our final answer. And now you're ready to complete some questions from the assignment. Uh, I have one more example for you before you can move on to the whole assignment. And that is uh, this question here, where we are using radicals in a word problem. So let's take a look at uh, this particular example. Finding the length of x as an exact value. Uh, let's take a look. So if we have this length x, well, if we notice in this problem, we can see if this is the, the length of this whole side, so this is the length of the whole side here, and this expression represents this length, then it seems to have to, to go forward that this expression minus this expression will be the expression for the length of x. The whole vertical minus this bottom vertical is this x vertical. So let's, let's set that up. We can write it down here. We have 8 root 2 plus 2 root 12. And we're subtracting this whole piece. So I'm going to put a square bracket here. Say 5 root 27 minus 4 root 18. And we're going to have to distribute this negative sign to the whole thing. So we're subtracting this whole piece, which means we're going to be subtracting this first 5 root 27 and then subtracting the negative 4 root 18. So I'm just going to copy this down because we didn't use it at all. And then distribute the negative through. So negative 5 root 27 and this negative uh, if we we put an arrow here, if we um, negative times a negative is a positive, so it's positive 4 root 18. So that gets rid, rid of the brackets, but then we also need to continue to simplify this into mixed radicals that m might have the same radicand. Uh, we notice that the index is the same already. So again, we're going to write down... Um, what we didn't use. Now here the root 12 can be simplified or broken down into its factors. So let's try and find a perfect square factor of uh, 12 and that is the number 4, right? Number 4. Um, hopefully by now you're, you're starting to realize that you can split this radical into a product of radicals and uh, although I didn't show it underneath one radical that 12 was equal to 4 times 3. Hopefully you're getting to this step rather easily. So here we have 5. Now the square root of 27 can be uh, broken into factors. Let's try and find a perfect square factor. And 9 is, is it. Um, 9 times 3 is 27. And again, I, I skipped, the, skipped the step where I made 27 equal to 9 times 3 underneath one radical sign, I've split that using the rules. Uh, again here, 4, and another perfect square factor of 18 is 9, and of course the other factor is 2. So now it looks like we can take these perfect square factors, and since there's a square root of them, we can, we can simplify. So again, we didn't use this, this is 8 root 2, this is 2, this root 4 becomes a 2, root 3. This root 9 becomes a 3, root 3 here. And then this 4, or, or sorry, this root 9 again becomes a 3, and then we have root 2. So here, of course, if there's no operation in between here, this is treated as a multiplication, right? So although you can see it says 2 radical 4, it really means 2 times. Uh, the square root of 4. So here we have 8 root 2 plus 4 root 3 minus 15 
root 3 plus 12 root 2. Now since we have like radicals here, we can now combine terms using their coefficients. So here we have 8 root 2's and we also have 12 root 2's. So that actually is 20 root 2's and then we have 4 root 3's and negative 15 root 3's. Now when you put that together you should um, get negative 11 root threes. So we have an answer right here. Alright, so you ha you're ready to do your assignment and uh, I'll see you in class uh, with any... Oh, sorry, we also need to... Uh, this is the exact value, but we also need to get a decimal to the nearest tenth. So if we were to put that into our calculator, um, we would find a value for the nearest tenth and I'm sure you, that you can do that in your calculator. Okay, so you're ready for the assignment and I'll see you in class.